So, everyone's eager to make this kind of typical main menu scene in Godot? Well, that's actually quite easy to do. Let's see how we can make this kind of scene and code up all the command logic for the main menu buttons. Okay, so first off, you can set up your UI thanks to a few Godot control nodes. So, start by making a new scene with a control root node, meaning that this is a UI scene, and you see that, by default, this control node is set to full rect mode, meaning that it will shrink and stretch to fit your current screen size. Then, for the background, you can use a color rect to get uniform tint, or a texture rect if you want to use an image, for example. Make sure to set it to full rect mode too, so that it also covers the whole screen. Then add another node under your root node, this time of type center container, and have it stretch as well. What this node will do is auto place all of its children in its center dynamically. So if inside we create another container node, that is a VBox container this time, to lay out our elements in a vertical column, then we're finally able to instantiate our actual visible elements or menu buttons, and you see that they're automatically stacked vertically in the middle of the screen. Of course, we should change the text on each button and rename the nodes in the hierarchy to keep all scene clean. And also, you probably want to style those elements a bit better, so be sure to check out either the elements individual theme overrides or to use a UI theme, as I discussed in this last video I made on Good UI. Okay, so now let's say that you're happy with your menu UI layout. The buttons of a typical main menu can do three kinds of things. They either take you to another scene, like if you hit play, or they show an additional pop-up window on top, like a settings panel or a load menu, or they simply exit the game. So time to see how to do all of this in our little demo menu. First, we'll attach a new script on our root node. Note that here I'm picking the GDScript language, but I'll actually show you how to write it both in GDScript and in C-sharp in just a second. Now, if we open this script in our IDE, we see that, for now, it's pretty empty. So let's start by preparing our very first callback function for our play button. Okay, so for the play button, we want it to take us to another scene that is the actual game. For this demo, I'll use this game.tscn file that I made for a previous tutorial on how to make an FPS controller in c -sharp. And by the way, you can get it for yourself if you're a member of my Patreon. But anyway, any other scene will work, this is just to demonstrate the workflow. Okay, so to do that switch to another scene from our main menu, we can simply use Godot's built-in getTree.changeScenetoFile method, and pass it the relative path of our game scene file. As a quick reminder, this res column double slash prefix means that Godot will start looking in the project's root folder, and then go down the path that we gave it. And last but not least, let's use the ready function in our script, that will be called when the scene is instantiated, to get our button, and link this function as a callback to its press signal, like this. By the way, here I'm using a unique name access on my button, as shown by this person sign in the code. To do that, I've selected my node in the hierarchy, in the editor, and I've enabled the unique name access option by right-clicking on it and toggling the option on. This is a really nice trick that I love to use, because this way I can access my button from anywhere in the scene, no matter where it is in the hierarchy, without having to worry about its actual path, as long as it's the only node that has this name in the scene. And so if I start the game now, you see that when I click on the play button, the game indeed switches to the game scene that we saw earlier. Now, of course, this is a bit sudden, so in a real game you'd probably have some transition effect, or even a loader effect, so yeah, if you're curious about that, be sure to check out those tutorials that I made on both topics. But in any case, this works nice, and so the next step is to have our settings button show a settings panel. For this, we don't actually need any code, because suppose that we've prepared a super simple settings panel in our hierarchy like this one. Now, a super important thing is that to avoid this panel blocking my mouse clicks and other inputs when it's hidden, we need to make sure that both the center container and the panel container have their mouse filter mode option set to ignore. This way, the inputs will simply go through those elements by default. Also, for now, we should make sure that we hide the panel so that it doesn't show when the game starts. 
And now, to have the panel appear when we click the settings button, all we have to do is select our button, go to its node and then signals tab, and double click on the pressed signal to link a callback to it. We'll select the settings panel container node and click the pick button at the bottom. Here we've got the list of all the methods available as callbacks for a button click on this node, which isn't much for now. And that's because we need to toggle off both filters at the bottom. This way, the list now shows us every possible function on the node, including the built-in or inherited ones, and the ones that don't have the exact same number of parameters as our pressed signal, which is zero. Okay, so now we can use the search bar at the top to find the show function, and then validate everything to link our button signal to this built-in method. And if we try it out, we see that this works great, and we didn't even have to code anything. Now, just for completeness sake, let's make sure that when this panel is opened, it properly prevents input on the other elements in the background. Remember that for now this wouldn't happen because we changed the panel's mouse filter mode earlier. So let's link a second callback to our button's press signal, still on the settings panel container, and this time we'll use the set mouse filter built-in. Now, contrary to the show method that we used before, you see that this function expects an input parameter. To define it, we can use Godot's signal parameter binding system, which I actually talked about here, and where basically we use the dropdown on the right to pick the right variable type and then set its value below to manually tell Godot what this extra parameter should be. In the case of the mouse filter, which is an enum, you see that we don't directly have a mouse filter enum type, but of course any enum value can actually be matched to an integer, as shown in the Godot docs. So we can use the int type and keep the value of zero to set our mouse filter mode to stop. And there we go. The button now properly shows the settings panel and blocks our inputs when we're inside. Of course, I've made sure to do the reverse when I click on the close button of this panel over here. Finally, to have our quit button actually quit the game, we need just a few additional lines of code. We'll make a second callback function, and inside we'll call the getTree.quit built-in, and then we'll link it to our button's press signal, like before in the ready function. And here we are. We've made a simple but fully functional main menu in just a few minutes, and with less than a dozen lines of code. I really hope you liked this tutorial. Don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel to get more game dev tips, and to leave a comment to tell me what you'd want me to talk about. Of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon and YouTube members for the support, and to you for watching. As always, take care.